If you saw our recent video announcement, we are now dealers for Patrick James Eggle guitars out of the UK. Phenomenal, phenomenal guitars. But it really jumped out to us that we should compare the uh, make and carve top with, well, its inspiration. So today we're putting it through the paces against a 59 reissue Les Paul. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas, and you can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So if you missed the previous video, uh, we are absolutely in love with these new Patrick James Echo guitars. Uh, the first ones we've received are Makins. We have a carved top, two semi-hollows. We've got more on order from the various other uh, models that he does. But with the carved top, you know, I, when I spec'd these out with Patrick, I really did go for kind of a vintage appeal. Mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of more modern appointments that he does with these guitars, and it's, it's kind of a... a good blend between both worlds. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of like, okay, you know what we should do? We should compare this to another high-end single cut, uh, maybe the one that inspires it. And so we did. Maybe the um, one that you own. And this is mine. <laughs> yeah. This is a uh, 2018 uh, Gibson Les Paul Custom Shop 59 reissue VOS. Um, and now they, I think they would just call this uh, light-aged Murphy Lab. Um, so, I love this guitar. It's like kind of my pride and joy. Yeah, that's uh, the one. Yeah, I, I've I've really been happy with <clears throat> this guitar. It's in, it's an impressive guitar. Um, I, we've you know featured it on this channel a few times. It's what we grab when we're going to compare something. Um, and so you know what the Megan has a, a lot to kind of live up to. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, now with. It's interesting. I think it's better to compare it to this one than to say just a standard 60s mm -hmm. or standard 50s. Um, there is a lot, like you saw in that previous video, that goes into how you spec'd out this guitar with mm -hmm. Patrick um, and the features that we think kind of set them apart. It's incredible to play. I mean, just easy right. to play, sounds great. Pickup wise, finish wise, top wise, yeah. hardware wise, I mean, this is all. Very top of the line. Well, let's talk about why this makes the most sense. This is a custom shop Gibson instrument. There isn't a custom shop uh, Patrick James Eggle because it is a custom shop. Yeah. It is a small boutique builder. They are in the UK. They're making phenomenal things. Uh, if you missed the first video, Patrick's been doing this for over 30 years. He's had a storied uh, career. He's better well known in the UK. He's he's very uh, connected with Faith Guitars. He's had uh, guitars in the past he was building, did acoustics. And these have been so well received that kind of all over the place on both sides of the pond, people are going, these are some of the best Les Paul style guitars. Chris Buck, who is a UK guitar player um, and plays with the band Cardinal Black, he's pretty big on YouTube, so you might have seen him. He has a uh, Macon that uh, Patrick did for him. He's featured on uh, the Eggle website. And his video was, the best Les Paul I've ever played. His playing, by the way, is phenomenal. So you should check out that video. I'm a big fan of Chris Buck. Um, so I, you know, when we're specking this, it, <laughs> there's so many things that are just like standard. The top, this is a ridiculous like chevron flamed top. It's standard. Um, when we did this color, which is a T-burst, uh, Patrick said, hey, we typically on these kind of vintage style colors, we'll do like a hand burnished finish do you want that instead of like the really glossy finish? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. That's kind of what this is. Yeah. Um, where it's, it's still gloss, but it feels super thin, yeah. but still like sturdy. You know, it, it's awesome. It's all um, full nitro. You can uh, get these, not relic, but they'll do like a, a checked, you know, mm -hmm. nitro finish if you want that. Uh, <clears> the, <throat> the bridge and hardware are all, you know, kind of brass yeah, saddles. Brass. I didn't get those on my fifty nine. Ah, uh, come on. Oh. I don't know what are you um, doing? Because it didn't, and the reason is because it didn't come in fifty nine. But I think that's an upgrade. Um, yeah. I like the tuners on these. The pickups. Mojo. Mojo pickups, not Mojo tone. Mojo pickups. Small boutique pickup builder uh, in the UK, putting out phenomenal pickups. These are. Really nice. And it's a good, style. good comparison because uh, so are those custom buckers? These are now? custom buckers, so non-potted are... custom buckers, which is their current, you know, iteration of the thing that sounds as close to a path pickup. You know, it's interesting. What sounds 
like which path pickups sound close to each other. They're all different. It's funny because when you look at it, like path pickup specs are kind of all over the place. And so when they designed the custom buckers, like these are Alnico 3 magnets, which is not what would have been in the originals, but is what sounds like what the originals sound like now because of age. Anyways, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, we, there's no binding. It's a reveal binding of the maple cap. And there's no binding on the neck. And I really like that kind of clean aesthetic look. Um, All the contours in the world. Yes. You yeah. Know. And, uh, you know, and now I do have a metal cover here, but this is just black plastic. Yeah. Um, so I really like what they've chosen there. It just looks, I mean, you take even from bigger shops, it bigger was. brands, you know, um, some of this type of stuff, the contouring, the really nice tops, mm -hmm. very uh, PR-esque, you know, in some ways. Yeah, um, but the heel, you know, if I have a knock against PRS and I own one, it's they have usually this large heel and there's not a lot of contouring on most of their models, if at any at all. This is really nice and it's not just, see here's where Patrick and his team as designers makes me smile because that line perfectly follows that line. The heel, yeah. Um, it's, it's for uh, the purpose of playing, but it's also aesthetically beautiful. Yeah. A little Clouson style. Clouson Goto. style Gotos. Uh, actually, not Clouson style because they're open gear. I guess um, so. And, you know, we talked about this in the last video. I don't know, outside of like Murphy Lab stuff, Gibson doesn't really do this, but the, t the headstock and the heel are sprayed and the middle part is oiled and sanded within an inch of its uh, grain's life. <laughs> so it's about the smoothest neck you'll ever put in your hands. Yeah. So, yeah, they're just phenomenal guitars. But this is also phenomenal. <clears throat> yeah. So that is, you know, that's the one, right? Yeah. The I love Burst, this the 59, it's a perfect guitar. And we do. So it's good because we carry this brand. It's not like this is something you can't get anymore. No. We carry these. We sell them. They're probably the most popular Gibson Custom Shop Electric. Is the 59. Um, in various finishes, I love that color. I think it's just um, classic, you know. It just, that is... It actually has changed since I bought it. Yeah. Spoiler alert, that happens uh, with an aniline dyed nitro finished guitar. Because I will confess, when I first got this, I bought it because... I got it because the fin the sound was incredible, and I was just like, I, you know, it sounds so great. Um, but I was a little disappointed in the top. Follow me. When I first got it, I was a little disappointed in the top. It didn't look like this. And I would see some others out on the internet. I was like, wow, oh, that looks prettier. It's not why I bought the guitar, so it doesn't matter, whatever. And then over the years, it, it kind of sinks into the grain. And it looks just shows up better and, and better and better. So well, yeah. I mean, I've I've had the pleasure of playing this exact guitar a couple times, and um, I so I played both of them. I love this guitar already. This is my new obsession in the store, <laughs> and I really wanted to be like, oh man, it kicks Chris's Les Paul out the window. But that is an amazing guitar too, yeah. and it's more just. This is how this is inspired by some parts of this with different things that a small builder that is very talented can do right. on that production scale. Uh, but they're both great. I Let's listen to them because I got some thoughts on those. Okay, so. let's check it out.
All right, well, there you have it. So you've played both. Uh, I should say I've set this guitar up how I like it. It's pretty, pretty good. It's, it's not bad, dude. It's uh, not bad. It, I, I did that because I didn't like the way it was set up out of the case. So, you know, I love everything else about the guitar, but there you go. Just being honest. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you get a, a Gibson and you got to do a little work to get the sound out of it and the feel out of it, but it's whatever. So here are my thoughts. Yeah. One, this is a good comparison because everybody knows what that is. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves it. Few people in comparison know what this is. So now you know there's something else out there. But there are also plenty of people out there that love Les Pauls mm -hmm. that have their 59 and they have their standard and they have their, you know, 60 and their 58 and they got everything, right? right. Um, and I think some people, if you love the vibe, you love the style, you love your single cut with you know mahogany and maple and this whole thing, um, there is something to be said about getting that formula from a builder of this size with the attention to detail mm -hmm. and at the price that it is, you know, and, and with the customizations that you yeah. want without like really going completely broke. Yeah. yeah. So you can you can say somebody like a certain type of player should potentially look at this over that, mm -hmm. but also that type of player should consider this in their collection Absolutely. as just something different. So, you know, it's not like one's better than the other because this has got the name and everything and it's got the legendary status and this has got the small builder vibe and the customization, all that. They can coexist mm -hmm. and they can coexist in your collection. Um, but yeah, well, very cool. And this exists because Patrick likes this guitar. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's how that works. <clears throat> Builders inspired by instruments that they want to then make their own. Yeah. And I, th I think he really has done a fantastic job of doing exactly that. Yeah. Um, and of course, when we get the 96 in, we're going to have to, you know, compare that with some fancy stuff as well. Yep. But it's one of our goals to have options in our store, yeah. right? Um, so we're always going to have this. Mm -hmm. Now we can have this, yep. and they can hang side by side in harmony, and uh, we'll have more things to you know show off and find for the right player. But yeah, they're great. Well, and let's talk you know value. So uh, if you want to order or purchase a fifty nine uh, Les Paul reissue standard right now, it'll run you about sixty six ninety nine as we're doing this video. Your mileage may vary. Prices change. Check our website, alamomusic.com. Um, that's for standard, If you and they don't do the VOS on there anymore, so the closest thing to that now would be Murphy Lab uh, with, like, the very light aging, um, and that is over seven grand. Um, so, you know, it, it's a premium for these guitars. You throw guitars. a Brazilian on there. You throw a Brazilian on there, and you're looking at 20, you know, if you want a Brazilian ring, uh, rosewood fretboard. On it's this really going to affect the tone, by the way. So. <laughs> well, you know. Maybe if it was the neck, but so and this one it comes in. Uh, I, I think we were saying it was a fifty-six twenty or forty or something, something like that. Like that yeah. So yeah, under six grand, um, you know, for something that is really again a custom bespoke made instrument, and, and so there's a lot of value there. Um, and I think those Mojo pickups sound phenomenal. Yeah. So uh, so do those. But, they do. Yeah. You know, they did sound different from each other, mm -hmm. but we left the settings exactly the same, and they both gave that kind of vibe, right? Yeah. Um, yeah that awesome. thick, throaty, <clears throat> full Les Paul Get sound. Thickness. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I will say, I, I love the case that this came with. It's the classic vintage, you know, brown uh, case from Gibson. I, the one problem is it's a small case, and so there's never enough room. The cases these come with are just beautiful, and there's room for your strap and everything else, which is nice. Yeah, so. nice case. Um, yeah, I love them both. I've always wanted one of those. Now I will always want one of these until it's time, but we got time. We got plenty of time. So, um, yeah, it's nice that they, they write, write that on Just there. Just handwritten serial number on there? Yeah. I think I've only seen that on some private stocks and you know things of that caliber. But yeah, I think for the money, this guitar is, is pretty perfect. And uh, once Chris does a setup on a 59, uh, reissue then that guitar will be perfect too but we definitely want to hear what you think mm -hmm. um, if you fell in love with either of these you can't have that one 
No. You can't have this one. Unless I sell it to buy one of those. You would never do that. Nah, probably not. But you know what? I, you know what's on my list is um, a semi hollow. In fact, the flame na- maple neck uh, lemon burst one that we got, someone needs to buy to remove the temptation. Yeah. Because uh, I, yeah, I'm jonesing for that guitar. But yeah, let us know in the comments uh, what you think in this comparison. Uh, what do you think about you know the two builders? I know there's going to be a lot of thoughts out there regarding Gibson. Were you familiar with Patrick James Eggel? Uh, because he's like I've said before better well-known across the pond uh, than he is here. And hopefully that changes because he and his team of nine people make some phenomenal instruments. And uh, I'm just so happy we have them in stock now. So We're the place. Yeah, we're the place to get them. So let us know in, uh, your thoughts in the comments. And if you are not already doing so, please subscribe, hit the bell icon to turn on notifications, and like our videos so that more guitar nerds like you and us find out about them. As always, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.